Um, welcome everyone uh, to the GLDS uh, platform. Um, I'm Professor Claudia Kotka from Washington, D.C., and founder of the platform, and I'm particularly uh, pleased to see you, everyone there um, here on the platform, as well as for those who will be joining us um, post, uh, uh, post symposium, just because of the geo positions uh, that everybody is uh, coming from on this. Um, I'd like to um, Say a warm welcome to our ambassadors, to our members, um, and I like to just uh, announce that we do, we are increasing in the not only membership but also ambassadorial representation from all over the world. Um, and more specifically, I like to um, uh, give a special welcome uh, to ambassador from Mongolia, uh, GLDS, as well as. Uh, um, newest uh, board of directors member, uh, Professor um, Bazar Amar Khan, who will be um, making some remarks um, and just a, um, a brief uh, introduction uh, later on in the um, uh, in our timeline here. Um, I also would like to, of course, welcome our GLDS Global Ambassador, um, which uh, uh, Krista Sherban, with, and I'm sure that you all of you have had the opportunity to not just be introduced, but recruited by her as well as interact with her. Um, that said, I'd like to just uh, point out that today's symposium is part of the mini series, uh, which is basically substantiates the core elements of the subsector of what GLDS uh, wishes to accomplish in terms of leadership skill contributions to existing healthcare experts, both in the, of course, dental and oral craniofacial um, sector and uh, discipline, as well as the extended healthcare disciplines. Uh, that said, today's topic, of course, will be on modern questions for the dental lead on media issues. And I would like to, first of all, just welcome Krista Shervan with a few comments. Hello, everyone. So I will give a quick introduction before Dr. Claudia Kotka um, takes the floor. So Professor Claudia C. Kotka, DDS MPH, is an internationally recognized lecturer, USA expert with ADA, SCDP, AAMI, ANSI, ISO, IEC, ITU, AFDO, healthcare analyst, dentist, toxicologist, founder of various ventures in private and public health with expertise in innovation of clinical protocols, medical devices, global laser technology, clinical applications, and oral systemic axes, global health sector intelligence, healthcare policy, and expert witness before USA Congress and White House. She is appointed at rank of professor at Liberty University School of Health Sciences and, and international research collaborator with the Dental Research Center using conventional and alternative technology of Victor Babish University of Medicine and Pharmacy, Timisoara, Romania. Thank you. Thank you very much, Krista, for that. And um, to jump exactly right in the scope of uh, our uh, topic today, essentially, Krista gave an introduction um, as a representation of what a media pitch uh, bio uh, of an expert should look like. And sometimes uh, the requirements, of course, of uh, the rendition or reference um, in the context of media um, interactions, as well as media collaborations and contribution requires even less of a, of a, a succinct uh, representation, but by no means comprehensive. And so with that said, we are actually here to, um, to of course, uh, address this core issue, um, I'd like to just remind you these are just the basic uh, core essentials. Um, there will be subsequent uh, symposiums in much more greater detail from experts in the media who transact in the healthcare commodity space, both on the uh, actual product side, meaning development uh, products, um, uh, as well as the actual reporting side, which is the journalistic side. With that said, here are the disclosures um, uh, listed uh, on the screen here for you. Um, and of course, we're going to jump in right to the objectives. We, of course, always want to have a macro and macro view. Uh, we're going to focus on um, four pillars here. And my apologies for the uh, substitute of five instead of four. We're going to identify, of course, the function of media for the dental expert and for healthcare expert, that is identify the media, of course, participants, the media requirements, and of course, looking at past, present, and future. Um, 
coordinates or, or compositions, if you will, of the interaction and what that looks like or the, what that looks like and what that will look like for the future. So 360 Healthcare, of course, you know, encompasses the platform which renders and hopes to render leadership skills for the healthcare experts all over the world in the respective geoposition, keeping in mind the customization requirement for that geoposition. So the, exp the scope and mission is not to homogenize situations because they cannot be. For purposes of research, I know that we have to assume some kind of parameters and that is legitimate and, of course, disclosed within that particular approach and modeling. However, in the real world, we treat one individual patient at the time. And of course, we treat one geoposition that's very specific and very unique at that particular point in time. That said, the 360 composition axis includes um, the private and public health experts. The academia incorporates into this particular rendition of leadership, which should be, by the way, and I highlight, should be the leaders, the appropriate leaders by, of course, legislation and appointment and autonomy for the profession. With, of course, within acad academia, however, there's a component of the educational platform, which of course comes again and is rendered by the leadership. So academia is, is I would say, separated in two different categories, if you will. The R&D community as well incorporates and is comprised of scientists, but not just limited to that. The industry, of course, um, is another subsector component element, a regulatory component, the legislation, which is jurisdictional by government and geoposition. The business subsector, of course, has the um, um, essential contribution, the unique value uh, propositions, as well as the consumer's platforms and the consumer component, the media and the legal. And today we're going to just focus essentially on the media, as, uh, as already mentioned knowing that each subsector, of course, uh, it's its unique contribution definition as well as um, a potentiated uh, a rendition of not only understanding the sub-elements uh, sub components, but also um, the ability to easily read through them in a very time-sensitive manner, and of course, commentary from the expert, um, irrespective of early career or more senior position. Um, that said, looking at the media aspect, um, the first for instance, consideration, of course, is from a contract perspective. We have to understand the individual, either the entity, uh, the individual can be an expert working for a large entity organization, either NGO or government based or a large private organization, as opposed to an expert subsector or a private sector uh, expert, such as, for instance, private sector clinician or a private sector research um, um, entity, etc. The of course, the rendition of this has to, first of all, one expert cannot, one thing the expert cannot do is cannot, um, I would say, um, exercise the availability for the full scope of the contribution and comprehension in the opportunity for in media representing the subject matter, if they don't understand the contract, if they don't understand the language, the perspective and the unique position the media in, is in. Particularly on the expert subsector side, the private sector side, of course, oftentimes these, uh, these type of scenarios or these parameters are much lacking resources and of course accessibility to the media context. And this is of course has to be self-directed or represented and there's a lot more burden uh, that um, through the GLDS platform and leadership skills, we really want to enhance not only the awareness of these particular factors, but also the know-how, how to navigate and how to um, engage in the existing access. And this is where we're going to go to the, the second uh, a note here, which essentially is the requirement to manage contracts. However, the contract, um, does need to be understood in terms of um, not only the language that is utilized from a legal perspective responsibility, as well as from an application and utilization perspective, meaning the expert needs to understand the, the flexibility of open carte blanche, if you will, of rendition. Um, it is oftentimes forgotten that the subsector um, um, platform such as media will come and solicit the expert contribution and or the extra contribution or the expert will engage or try to secure media accessibility. 
the reality uh, to be remembered and prioritized is the expert has the carte blanche of contribution. The knowing, of course, merits then and build on the confidence of not only, of course, remembering that the expertise is there, but also the allowance for the fluidity. And oftentimes media, um, as any other entity, will have its own agenda. They will want to, for instance, cover a particular example on the subject matter, but they will want to skew it from a perspective, for instance, that might not uh, be as substantiated by the accurate, the accuracy of the science, um, or it might be a new potentiated or probed uh, position, uh, which hasn't really been uh, tested properly through the protocols or know-how or the paradigms of scientific evaluation that we as experts understand and know. At the same time, from a private sector perspective expert, a private clinician, the perspective also has to incorporate the actual individual, the consumer considerations in the community at large. The influence and the potential um, opportunity for the influence to, to render um, a um, educational awareness that expands beyond just one individual, which oftentimes gives the opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one treatment. However, having the platform accessible to uh, the consumer at large gives a great deal a meaningful um, opportunity to incorporate both technical language, meaning addressing in one scope the agenda of the media um, pitch and media requirement. At the same time, however, keeping in mind, first of all, the um, integrity of the expert and the subject matter um, expertise requirement, as well as the um, the scope and mission of the subject matter, which is to protect the patient. And so they're multifaceted coordinates that the individual, meaning the expert, has a carte blanche in terms of contribution. But oftentimes this is not going to be highlighted nor even mentioned when the media counterparts interact with the actual expert. And it merits an even though it's understood, but it merits to be highlighted to the experts. And I would say that this is one aspect which often goes missed and of course is easily forgotten or can be easily forgotten when given the opportunity to interact. That said, the corporate culture, for instance, that exists in large entities, let's say experts work within the auspices of academia, they work within the auspices of pharmaceuticals, um, they were offices of industry, private sector, um, or for instance, NGOs, non-governmental organizations, or even the government sanctioned funding, that direct funding under the auspices of government. We know that there are restrictions and parameters and yet the expert has the due diligence to respect the integrity Hippocratic oath of the subject matter. This, this by, uh, by uh, um, um, coordinated um, requirement um, deserve of course the attention, uh, deserve of course the recognition and the protection. And at the same time, the fluidity and the navigation of the expert through the interaction with the media proposition, whether it is time limited to less than two minutes or you, there's a five minute segment. However, note that um, the, again, going back to the freedom of the expert, the expert has an amazing carte blanche potential to incorporate things both in micro and macro view. Now, one thing to be said is about the fact that media oftentimes as, as any other entity has its own priorities, it knows its culture, it knows its audience. And oftentimes I've observed that media wishes to have very simplified terms, concepts. However, I always caution when I interject myself with media for the past 15 plus years, that simplifying the concept oftentimes can allow for and risk for um, leaving out essential participles or participants or elements of the picture, which is absolutely necessary for the consumer to obtain. And so my own individualized, I would say, approach to, to address the 
oftentimes the the uh, almost what it looks like a um, um, two ex two two differentiated. Uh, um, uh, expanded um, uh, variables that are not nearly uh, coincided as they should is to share both technical nomenclature as well as um, layman's terminology within the composition. So the message is that one cannot compromise the expert subject matter composition in quality or quantity, but on the other hand, it needs to keep in mind the media's um, targeted um, um, uh, goals in terms of the audience requirement. And I have to say that oftentimes media uh, can um, be off, uh, um, I would say stuck in a past, um, past um, cycle of activity. And I'll give you an example. Um, the um, um, one particular, um, opportunity in media which kept recurring um, with a great deal of interest and I was invited frequently within a very short amount of time back on the same live segment in the media um, highlighted that they really would prefer to have the technical nomenclature uh, essentially be eliminated from the conversation of the contribution and just keep the simple terminology um, you know as the a forefront. Now I know very well that the audience will always engage in discussions with friends, family, strangers, um, uh, researching the online information and very rarely actually have access or even care to go to the more research journals that we of course uh, uh, deal with and we of course as experts are uh, well um, well suited uh, um, and trained in those particular subjects. That said, when the individual starts to compare to do comparison of value propositions between what is said uh, in simplified terms to what it actually is in terminology terms, oftentimes there's a complete loss of disconnect. And if very simple terms, I'm going to use this analogy, no longer the comparison is between apples to apples, but rather apples to oranges and to strawberries. And the consumer may not even know they are navigating away from what the actual depiction or the reference invokes. And that results in confusion. So, uh, and yet the, um, the media producer kept saying, you know, we really would like you to 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 just step that aside and of course later i found out this was just as as a as i would say um a uh, historic uh um assumption uh of course and um, there were certain some data to uh in the past show that however as um population um profile change uh my question to them was well are these um uh, you know the the pop, the audience. Are there any type of changes in the audience that are that are uh, showing up on the shows? Because numbers, of course, uh, and statistics um, lead essentially in terms of the funding for media outlets. And they said, no, no, no. As a matter of fact, your show and the segment has very, very high uh, recurrency, you know, rates. So the reality here is that yet the media in this particular case did not suffer any type of setbacks. By on the contrary, the audience actually was increased during particular segment, and yet they were trying to meet assumptions that were perhaps historic, but not current. And this is where experts, of course, can delineate by, um, by logic and by evaluation where the subject matter and how the subject matter gets to be illustrated, um, irrespective of time limitations. Now, uh, speaking about time limitations, real-time contributions, of course, are the best way for them, for experts, healthcare experts, to actually practice, even though it may be a de novo startup or a baseline uh, introduction to media. Um, the no edits, essentially, premise is probably the best, my recommendation is the best way to approach it, because very rarely edits actually are even rendered. And so, the um, uh, self-imposed discipline is really the way to gain experience. And um, the aspect of the limited time opportunity, and as I mentioned earlier before, the introduction pitch that Krista Sherban has noted was intentionally um, in the format that you typically don't uh, um, uh, oftentimes hear in an academic presentation 
or let's say in an industry presentation um, or um, in a governmental presentation, in a hearing or a regulatory hearing. Um, so every sector and media specifically has its own parameters and understanding how to, um, of course, navigate and sometimes um, contracts may not be written, but rather uh, verbally just uh, um, secured. Um, and at the same time, the extended scope now in media doesn't just rest on television or live contributions, but rather in radio, um, online written information, as well as representing the entity through press releases and contributions um, in more uh, small um, brief scope, pitch-like, elevator, elevator speech-like format, or executive summary contributions, or of course, much larger contributions in white paper uh, positions, as well as um, other types of uh, contributions as thought leaders. And of course, um, the, um, I would say the presentation of uh, this example that I've just noted has to match the, um, the subsector uh, level of composition requirements so that it is actually recognized. If for instance, a press release is written and released and it does not follow the intricate, um, uh, the intricate uh, rendition of the parameters themselves um, as to what media would expect, uh, essentially it would be ignored or sidelined irrespective of the concept being absolutely superior and it might even have taken you know the number one interest however because it doesn't follow format it's completely ignored so with that i'd like to just um highlight that identifying media opportunities by uh, of course self-initiation as well as opportunities and networking is absolutely key and um, identifying the participants in media from journalists to producers uh, to of course media product platforms and keeping an eye out in the creative sense in terms of that particular type of introduction whether it's in person or whether it's online and of course noting the media requirements which are absolutely necessary to be respected and learned and incorporated and of course practiced in a way that makes you feel comfortable that every time you can actually give a very um, superfluous fluid and yet comprehensive according to the timeline that's required of you and that will of course will allow for further engagement and contribution in the future now that said we know there's a culture composition change in media as well from the past and the present also to future and the styles of course are always in function of the information that's available in the public uh, in the public sense or the interest for media to actually um, um, update the information quality or quantity but at the same time the expert can initiate that type of contribution requirement um, or feeling of responsibility which we carry as experts. Now the access of course to the media matters. Uh, and of course the geo position uh, um, also has a, a crucial element of contribution in terms of the, um, the interaction and the contribution potential. And so with that, I'd like to say a very thank you.